Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we are taking a look at an article titled, The 15 Best Questions to Ask on a First Date According to Relationship Experts. So I've done my fair share of videos in the past about questions not to ask on a first date, the worst questions, the best questions, and everything in between, you name it, I've probably done a video about it. But I wanted to take a look at this article specifically because it's according to relationship experts. So it's all therapists, psychologists, things like that. And I'll actually put a little image up here of all of the relationship experts that they are referencing in this article. Why I really want to do this is because I think there is such thing as good questions and then not so great questions um, in terms of a first date. There's definitely questions that are better to ask that are going to you know, create a more positive atmosphere to be in with the person that you're with, that are going to really reveal compatibility if you like this person enough to have a date too, um, and just really allow you to get to know this person on a level that other questions might not get you there. So again, gonna take a look at this, see what they say. I will tell you if I agree, if I disagree, um, elaborate on each one a little bit more and just kind of go through it with you. So you guys have been loving me doing these article videos lately. I did one last week of questions that women ask to reveal red flags in men on first dates that you guys really liked. So I thought this one would be interesting to go through as well. So let's get into it. This little excerpt here says, just remember a first date should not be a job interview with cocktails. And let's face it, it can be hard to get to know someone via questions without it feeling like an interrogation. Totally true. I think a lot of you feel that way, or at least you've expressed to me that you feel that way. Um, so it says to create a natural convo that ebbs and flows, make sure to strike a balance between asking them how they like to spend their time and getting to know the nitty gritty deets of their life, like how they handle conflict. Yeah, and I think, you know, whenever I do videos like this too, I don't want you to just copy and paste and ask them all of these rapid fire back to back. You know, take what you need, leave what you don't, have a few good questions that you wanna ask during the duration of the date, but let it kind of ebb and flow naturally as you go. It doesn't have to be, again, you rapid firing questions at them. It should be natural. It should, you know, kind of go naturally after you ask a question, and they answer, then you ask something else, um, and you guys kind of equal share and all of that. So again, make sure there's a balance here. I don't want you guys just copying and pasting questions and making it an interrogation room because that's not a good conversation. So what exactly should you ask on a first date? When I think of this question, I think of what is appropriate to bring up and what isn't. This says, I put them into categories. Number one, questions to see if you're both compatible in your values, your overall goals in life, and your personality to see if you have the skills needed in a relationship. That sounds fair. Just going into it, that sounds great. Question number one is, what made you interested in going out with me? Right off the bat, I'm like, meh, I don't know about that. So let's read the little thing. It says, a question like, do you like me on the first date is a surefire conversation ender. Yeah. Whereas an open-ended conversation like this one can start a conversation and lead into another question. By understanding what stood out to them about you, whether it's something you shared on your Hinge profile or randomly at the coffee shop you met, you can get to know what sparks their interest a little bit better. This question is also a little flirtatious, which can ignite a nice little spark at the beginning of your date. You know, I can kind of see that one as well. It's a little bit flirty, like, oh, what made you want to go out with me? Like asking it in kind of a joking way, I think could be a good way to ask this one. Um, you know, if you wanted to get more specific, say you and the person that you're going out with met on a dating app, you could say something like, oh, what caught your eye on my dating app or what made you swipe right? I think this one could also go maybe not so great depending on who you're out with and what their answer is. Um, but yeah, asking do you like me is the one of the worst questions you could ask. So this question is definitely better than that. So yeah, pretty good. But again, be wary, could go wrong. The next one is, what are you looking for? The point of this question is to gauge whether your dating goals are aligned. For sure, this says whether you're looking for a casual hookup or a life partner, their response will give you a clue as to what they're looking for. And you know what? When they tell you what they're looking for, believe them. I think this is where a lot of women really struggle with dating. They'll go out with a guy, they ask the guy, what are you looking for? The guy says, oh, just something casual, a hookup. And the girl's like, okay, yeah, I can get him to wanna to be in a relationship with me. I can change his mind. We're not doing that. We're too old for that. 
When people tell you what they're looking for, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Don't try to change their mind. So if you ask this question to someone and they give you an answer that does not align with yours, don't even waste your time, right? And I, I've often found that it's a waste of time to try to make yourself aligned with someone who has made it very clear from the beginning, AKA first date, that they're looking for something entirely different than you are. You know, if you're a guy who's looking for a serious relationship and the girl that you're on a date with tells you that she just wants a hookup, well, believe her. This says, don't be afraid to be direct about your dating goals. It's a time saver. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think it's important to date with intention, especially if you're getting to the stage where you're looking for a serious relationship. You guys know that I also don't promote casual fling situationships, hookup culture. I think it's really harmful for a lot of people and it's just not something that my channel is about. If you are interested in that, if that's what you're looking for, my channel probably is not the channel for you and that's okay. Um, but if you're looking for a serious relationship, you know, you should be with someone who's looking for a serious relationship too. And that's something I think it is important to be aligned on. So good question. Next question is what matters to you? This is asking questions that are too specific, like what are your hobbies can unintentionally isolate the other person. Maybe they don't have hobbies, but asking what matters to them will solicit a response for sure. Maybe they're really invested in a TV show. Okay, but that could isolate the other person too if they don't really watch TV or they don't watch the TV show that you talk about or they're super into health and fitness and can talk for days about this new workout class they've been taking. At baseline, any question that gets the other person's values is useful. Yeah, I think it's it's a better question to ask because it's a little more broad. It gives them you know, a bigger range to talk about things, so what matters to you? It, it can also be a little too broad. You know, you could also ask a question like, what are you most passionate about at the moment? Or what's a project you're working on? Or something that you're really interested in right now? You know, what matters to me? I can think of about a million things. My husband, my family, my friends, my work. I mean, I could go on and on about what matters to me. So, and I agree, sometimes you don't wanna ask such specific questions or questions that would solicit a one word response from them. Um, keeping it a little more open can be helpful depending on the person that you're talking to because we're all different. Um, you know, maybe you have way more hobbies than the other person and they run out of things to talk about in five seconds, whereas you have a ton of hobbies and you could go on and on all day about it. So yeah, I think asking more maybe what you're passionate about right now or what are you really interested in at the moment, um, you know, a lot of these things could could show someone's values in the process or just what they like which can be a great topic to piggyback off of and go a ton of different ways with the conversation. It's a very easy, natural way to talk about things that you're interested in, share a little bit more about yourself. I told you guys in the past to find their golden nugget, which is something that a person just lights up when they talk about. They could go on and on forever about it. Like it is just their golden nugget of information, um, something that they're really interested in and passionate about. So finding that will help you in a conversation because everyone likes to talk about their golden nugget. Okay, this next one is, when you think of a recent big political event, is there something that stands out to you? You know, this could be good for a lot of different reasons. It could show if you're aligned in terms of politics, which I think can be important. It can show if they're educated about what's going on in the world. I think a lot of people have no idea, and maybe for some of you that's totally fine. Maybe you're also someone who has no idea what's going on in the world, um, and that doesn't bother you, but if you are someone who is very in tune with what is happening around the globe, um, if you're you know, someone who's educated on politics and things like that, you might wanna be with someone who is too. But this says, you'll see if you're compatible with the way you see the world. Also, those tend to be big deals for people. The age old dating rule not to talk about religion or politics on the first date is kind of outdated. Yeah, because I think you know, it really can show someone's values and where they stand on a lot of different topics. Not always, but a lot of the time it can. If it matters to you, you should ask about it. If they can't handle difficult conversations, that's not a good foundation for a romantic relationship. True, and I think sometimes getting this out of the way up front, it eliminates any wasted time from the two of you. Because if you go on a first date and you realize you are completely opposite politically, you believe completely different things, you're not aligned on the way that you see the world, your values, your morals, anything, 
you're probably not compatible with that person and that's okay. That doesn't mean that person is a horrible person or a bad person. They're just not good for you. And that's okay. So yeah, I think, you know, getting questions like this out of the way early can set you up for success in terms of are we compatible or are we not? This says, what does your work-life balance look like? This question has a lot to do with figuring out if they have the skills to be in a healthy relationship. Are they willing to make time for a relationship? Do they put off important social engagements for work? These are all important things to know about a potential future significant other because you don't wanna be with someone who's going to consistently cancel on dates or who's going to put work before your relationship. Hmm, I don't know if necessarily asking what does your work-life balance look like is the best first date question. I think it could also be how do you spend your free time or what do you do when you get off work? You know, asking what someone does outside of work will often reveal their work-life balance. If someone says, oh, you know, I work all weekend or I always stay late at the office and I don't do a lot of in my free time or I work in my free time, well, that will reveal their work-life balance to you. Also considering the fact that it depends what stage of life they're in. If you're a girl going on a date with a man in his 20s, he may be working really freaking hard to set himself up for the rest of his life. That doesn't mean, you know, he won't put effort into your relationship. You know, there are a lot of people who are very busy with work, but they are still very good at making time for the people in their life that matter to them and are, are good at prioritizing that. So I wouldn't necessarily be so quick to write someone off over what their work-life balance looked like. And again, I think there might be a better way to ask that question. I think a lot of women are struggling with this with dating right now because a lot of them really want a guy who is successful, who does well financially, but I think a lot of them don't necessarily realize all the work that goes into that. Um, and so then they get into relationships with these people because, you know, they like the fact that they make a lot of money, they do really well, they have a good job, they have a fancy job title, but then they aren't okay with the amount that that person works. I think if you're looking for that in a man, you need to understand what comes along with that. Um, so maybe asking questions about work and what they do in their free time, their work-life balance, yada, yada, could, could reveal if that's something that you're okay with. And I think it's important to be honest with yourself about that. Because again, I think there are a lot of women who think they want that but then they get that and they're like, well, you don't spend enough time with me. You don't give me enough attention. Well, that's because they're trying to be financially successful. And sometimes that looks like a lot of work. This says a great follow-up question is, what does your life look like five years from now? Do you fit in their current schedule and their future plans? But yeah, asking what their relationship would look like in five years could, could tell you a little bit more about where they see themselves and what they see their future looking like. If someone says, you know, in five years, I would, I would like to have a family and you're someone who also wants that, well, that's a good sign because that's a sign that in five years, you guys are kind of on the same page about what you want your life to look like. Being aligned on life goals can be really important in terms of marriage, a family, all that kind of stuff. If you go on a first date with someone and you ask them, you know, what would your ideal life look like five years from now? Or what do you want your life to look like five years from now? And you're someone who really values family and you want a family of your own in five years. And they say, oh, you know, I really want to be promoted in my company and really be focused on work. Um, I don't want kids probably for another 10 years. Well, then you might not be aligned. You might not be compatible in terms of what you're looking for and what your life goals are. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a sign of incompatibility. So yeah, good question. The next says, what would you do if you had a week off? Hmm, this gives you an idea of what they like to do in their free time and what they value the most. Okay, yeah, that was kind of what I was getting at at the last point. I think asking how you spend your free time, what do you do on the weekends? Those are great questions because you get a sense of, okay, you know, I know what this person does for work, but what do they do when they have free time? What do they do for fun? What do they enjoy doing? And does that align with my lifestyle? This says maybe they have the travel bug and they're interested in learning about other cultures so they might book a trip or maybe they would prefer to kick it at home and spend time with their dog. At any rate, this is a quick way to see if you have similar vibes when it comes to your downtime without having to ask the question directly. It also opens the conversation to other questions and keeps the conversation flowing. Plus, thinking of free time may work up a smile. That is very true. But even more so than asking what they would do if they had a whole week off, I think just asking about free time in general can be a really great way to learn about someone and learn you know, maybe what their hobbies are, what their passions are, what they're interested in. If that doesn't come up earlier in the conversation, this is a really great way to do it. 
When you spend time with people, how often are you the one making plans? Good question. Or when you're planning things with friends and family, how often are you the one doing that? This question can make you privy to the other person's communication style and what role they tend to take on in their most intimate relationships. Sometimes one person feels they have to do it all because the other person is not good at communicating or maybe they are good at delegating. On the plus side, if your date is more of a planner and initiator, that lets you know they're responsible and reliable. Yeah, you know, if you ask this question and they're like, oh, I'm never the one making plans. You know, maybe that shows this person doesn't really take the lead. This person doesn't really take initiative. They aren't into making plans. They, you know, only go out if someone asks them out. That might be okay for some of you. It might not be okay for some of you. You know, if I went out with a guy and I asked him, how often are you the one making plans with people in your life? And he says, never. That's not good for me. I'm happy to make plans. I'm happy to contribute, but I can't be the one who's doing it all the time. I like to be with someone who takes initiative and takes the lead in a lot of scenarios. Of course, I contribute in other ways, and of course, I'm willing to make plans and put in effort as well, but I wanna be with someone who's doing that too. I don't want it, all of it to fall on me all the time. And I know a lot of you guys feel that way when you're dating women. And a lot of times it's tricky because women will expect you to initiate plans, make the reservations, plan the first date. I think that's the gentlemanly thing to do. Now, after that, I think it, it should be, you know, kind of both of you contributing. But I think it does leave a good first impression if you are the one doing it initially. You know, it shows that you take initiative, which is a good thing and something that a lot of women are looking for in men. So yeah, this could reveal a lot about a person, a lot about the effort that they put in. So yeah, good question. Next one is, how well do you feel like you compromise with others? This one feels kind of like a job interview type of question if I'm being honest, but let's read the little thing. Let's give it a chance. You can't build a relationship if you can't compromise. If you ask them this and they flounder, that tells you something all by itself. It may not seem like a big deal at the beginning if they're not budging on ice cream flavors, for example, but when it comes to long-term issues and decisions, it could lead to a rocky road. If you bump into a my way or the highway type of person, they may have some maturing to do before they're ready to date. Yeah, but I also feel like asking how well do you compromise? You know, people can exaggerate or lie when it comes to asking just flat out questions like this. They might be horrible at compromising and they answer the question and say, oh, I'm great at compromising. It's better in this scenario to just observe. You know, if you guys both want different appetizers, what do they do? Do they say, oh no, I don't wanna get what you want, let's just get what I want? Or do they say, oh, why don't we try both? Or do they say, oh, let's rock, paper, scissors for it? Do they make it kind of fun? Let's play rock, paper, scissors and whoever wins. Or do they say, you know, you've never been to this restaurant before, so I, wanna, I want you to be able to try what you want. Let's get the one that you want. Different people would be okay with different things that I just mentioned, but make sure that you're aligned. Nobody wants to be with a my way or the highway type of person. That's no fun. Compromise is an essential part of a relationship and that I do agree with in terms of this question. But again, I don't necessarily think coming flat out and saying how well do you compromise with others is always going to give you a straight answer. It's better in this case to just observe. What do you think is important for a healthy relationship? Okay, this feels a little stale. Knowing what your values are and asking about those specific values is how you get to know someone. You want to finish that first date with a clear answer on if you want a second. For example, if you value healthy communication, you'll want to know if your partner is the type of person to sit down and debrief with you after an argument or will instead brush it off like nothing happened and move on. Again, I think this is one of those things where something can be great on paper and when it comes to actually applying it to real life in a you know real scenario, it doesn't always translate. Someone could say all the right things and it not be accurate. I think this is another instance where it's better to observe and watch someone's actions and how they handle things versus what they say. But you know, if you ask someone, what do you think is important for a healthy relationship? And they say, sex. And that's all they say. I might be a little concerned. So maybe the way they answer this could be a positive or negative or red flag or green flag, I don't know. Again, very dependent on the situation and the people involved. But I do think this is one of those things that's better to observe and uh, 
and just you kind of get to know this as you go on dates with someone, right? Now, if you really value healthy communication, but when you're trying to plan the date with this person, they hardly message you back or they send one word answers, maybe communication isn't their strong suit and that's something that you just naturally pick up on. You don't even have to ask because you just naturally observe it. Next is how do you handle conflict? If they tell you, I don't know, that tells you something. The answer to this question lets you know if the other person has the self-awareness to recognize when they've hurt someone and where their behavior might need to change. We often end up in a relationship thinking that they'll just learn these skills, but with this question, you can acknowledge where their weaknesses lie and move forward accordingly. Although no one's perfect and people can always work on their conflict resolution, if you learn early on that you handle conflict differently, it can provide some much needed insight into whether that's a hurdle you're ready to tackle. I'm trying to think of a way that you could ask this question or something else that you could ask in order for this to feel a little less interviewee, like job interviewee, because how do you handle conflict sounds like a question I've been asked on every job interview I've ever been on. And that's because it's important for sure but it just feels a little too professional and buttoned up for a first date. Um, so let me think about this one and maybe I'll leave a comment below of something I've come up with as a better question. The issue with some of these questions is that someone could give an answer and it might not be the reality because a lot of people who struggle with conflict don't think that they struggle with conflict. They think that they're handling it well. They don't, they don't have the self-awareness to know that they're not handling it well. So for them to be able to communicate that to you on a first date, eh, the chances are slim. But I mean, if someone said, I don't know, to how do you handle conflict, that's a red flag. It also depends on what the conflict is. You know, I can be really non-confrontational, which is something that I'm, I'm currently working on but it's not because I have malicious intentions or I'm a bad person. It's just because I don't like to argue with people. So again, yeah, I don't know. This one just feels a little too interviewee to me. And, and let's be honest, I know that first dates can feel a little bit like interviews. You are trying to get to know this person to see if you're compatible, to see if you're a good match. But I think unfortunately there are certain things that the relationship will kind of reveal about you. They'll come out as you date this person, as you get to know each other more deeply, as you experience conflict, or as you experience situations that you might need to compromise on. Sometimes these things just, they come out naturally and they're not always, you don't always get the answer that you need by asking the question, especially on something like a first date where someone is trying to put their best foot forward. So, I don't know, you guys can let me know what you think down below. But I wanna think of a better way to ask this question. What is something in past relationships you needed to work on? You guys know how I feel about the past relationship questions on the first date, but let's read this. The answer to this one tells you, does this person reflect and how does this person hold themselves accountable? If they answer by casting the blame on everyone else, it's a red flag. Make sure you're screening for potentially toxic traits and looking out for healthy ones. Otherwise, you'll find yourself settling. I do think that the way someone answers this question can speak volumes of how good they are at self-reflection and just their character in general. You know, if you ask someone this and they bash their ex and they put all the blame on them and take no accountability for themselves, that's a red flag to me because you played a role too. And I've talked about this in a recent video I did. I can link that below for you where I go a little bit more in depth. But, you know, if someone asks you this, I would stay neutral. Don't trash talk, don't bad mouth. All it does is make you look bad but I don't really know if this is something that I would recommend asking on a first date. It depends who you're with. Some people will be more open than others to talking about past relationships and it can reveal a lot about a person. On the first date, you're there to get to know them. You're, get, you're there to talk about the both of you, to see if you're compatible, to share interests, to share similarities, to get to know each other. And I don't always think that talking about your ex or spending the whole date talking about your past relationship necessarily will get you there. Like you're there to get to know them and you know be right now, not so focused on the past. So let me know down below. I think this would be a better question for like a second or third date than a first date. Who is the person you talk to the most? Good question. 
Questions like this are lighthearted and help you understand what relationships the other person values most. It also offers you breathing room between the heavier questions too. Plus, you might catch yourself smiling hearing them gush and tell stories about their favorite person. Yeah, that question is really cute. I think this could, you know, really show you what relationships in their life that they that they value and they prioritize. Yeah, it could be their business partner, it could be their mom, it could be their best friend, it could be their sister, their brother. I mean, you know, it could be so many different things depending on who this person is, but I think that could reveal a lot about a person. And, you know, again, the relationships in their life that they really value and they make time for. I think it's important that the people in your life make time for you, you know, in the future, if you get to that point, but also make time for the people who are important to them. And seeing who is important to them could reveal a lot too. Next one is, what is the best gift you've ever received? Yeah, this is a good question until they say uh, the gift that my ex-boyfriend bought me. And then that's awkward. This is another easy breezy question if you're reaching for something non-committal. It gives them a chance to talk about something they enjoy. Maybe they got a new bike because they're training for a race or maybe they were given a telescope because they're really interested in space. Yeah, that's cute. All jokes aside, this could be a cute question depending on how they answer it. Maybe this person is a little bit sentimental and they say something that was a very sweet gift. You know, maybe it didn't cost a ton of money, but it was so thoughtful and so just genuine and kind. And I think that reveals a lot about someone. You know, if someone answers and they say, you know, a Chanel bag, you know, that's fine. Everyone is into their own things, but maybe that would reveal to you that, you know, they really value material things. They think that's the best gift they've ever gotten for certain reasons. Um, so yeah, that just might show compatibility in terms of what you value and what you enjoy in life. You know, again, as this said, maybe they got a new bike because they're training for a race. Well, they would tell you that and then you would talk about their experience training for a race and when they started doing that and you know, why they do it, why do they like it? There's a million questions you could ask just knowing that one little piece of information. So this kind of question could really help you kind of branch off into other questions as well. I'm trying to think now what's the best gift I've ever gotten. Let me know down below what's the best gift you've ever gotten. What was your first impression of me? This one kind of reminds me of the question earlier of why did you go, why did you want to go out with me or something like that? It was along those lines. Um, this is a good question to ask when you're well into the date, you know, when it's been a successful evening so far and you've had a quiet moment to reflect. It can help you get a sense of if they were paying attention to you or not. For example, if you're into sports and your date responds by saying, you seem really athletic and like that you like hanging out in nature, you can tell this person sees you, but if their description is inaccurate in your view, it gives you the opportunity to show your true self or leave them in the dust if they simply seem uninterested. What was your first impression of me? Yeah, I would only ask this if the date has gone incredibly well. And honestly, I don't even know if I would ask this on a first date. I think I would ask this on a second date. Because if you get the second date, it means that the first date went well enough for them to want to go out with you again. Um, but this this question could be really awkward. <laughs> uh, so yeah, not the best question, honestly, in my opinion. The next one is, what made you most excited about going on a date with me? Again, it seems kind of similar to the last one. This is a jumping off point to share more about yourself. This can also lead to questions like, what's most important for you to know about me? And what's something totally random you'd like to know about me? If they answer with, I don't know, nothing, then you have your answer. Well, yeah, obviously. The person that you're out with should want to get to know you on a deeper level and just want to know things about you and remember those things that you tell them. That's bare minimum. Yeah, I don't know. I think honestly, the question within this question is a better question to ask. What's something totally random you'd like to know about me? Or what's something totally random about yourself that you think is interesting? Or do you have a hidden talent? Like little fun questions like that. I think, you know, a lot of these questions are great. Absolutely don't ask all of them. But I think also it's important to ask some fun and lighthearted and silly questions on a first date too because you don't want it to be so interrogation room or so serious. And I think there were a few of these that really just seemed like job interview questions to me. And again, I know sometimes we have to mix those in. And if you if you mix that with some more lighthearted, fun questions, it can be totally okay. And again, also depends you know, on the person that you're with and who you are too. If you're someone who never jokes around, you don't really have a sense of humor and you're serious 24 seven, well, then maybe you aren't going to be as lighthearted and fun as someone else would be. So, 
interesting. You guys can let me know down below what you think. Share your favorites. What are some of your go-to questions on a first date? Since I've reacted to this, I might do another video about the best first questions to ask on a first date that really could build an emotional connection or allow you to you know, build kind of intimacy a little bit more. I know recently I've been seeing a lot about the 36 questions that lead to love. I'm sure some of you guys will be familiar with that. You can let me know down below if you've ever tried that, but I've been thinking about doing a video on that as well. So I might do that next. Let me know down below what you wanna see from me. Let me know what you think of these. Did you agree? Did you disagree? What are your go-to questions to ask on a first date? I would just love to get a little fun conversation going in the comments all about first dates, tips, tricks, just share all your knowledge with the guys down below. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.